police, fire, or medical help? Uh, police, medical. I'm pretty sure my girlfriend's dead. On October 28th of 2020, the world stopped. And I got a phone call that I only saw on movies. My phone rang, and I saw it said, Dad. And he was so choked up. He said, Morgan's gone. Someone took her, and she's dead. On October 28th of 2020, uh, 911 received the call that a woman was found shot in her driveway. It was October in Ohio, so it's kind of cold, rainy, drizzly. And when I arrived, there was a white vinyl fence that uh, was probably about six foot high that you could see mud splashed all up on, and there were fresh tire tracks next to that fence. Clearly, whoever was there left in a hurry. As I approached her house, there was a Ford Explorer that was in the driveway, and you could see uh, a female partially inside that vehicle and partially hanging outside of that vehicle. And that was Morgan Fox. Morgan was our stepsister. She was extremely outgoing. She was just so funny. You would never find someone more loyal than Morgan. To know Morgan, you loved her. Morgan's daughter was eight. They were both very much so each other's worlds, and everybody that knew them knew that. Knew it. Morgan had been working for the shipping company for a couple years. She had to work a flex shift, so they would go in anywhere from 1.30 to like 4.30 in the morning. That day, her boyfriend woke up, I think it was like 6 o'clock in the morning, and could see Morgan's car was still there. And so he walked out, and the door was open to her car, and that's when he saw that at this point she had been gone for a handful of hours. It would have been very difficult to find DNA, but it was a gravel driveway. And leaves are falling all over, and it was raining. And so the digital evidence in this case was going to be the most important evidence we had. We had uh, patrol units canvass the neighborhood, local businesses throughout that area, looking for ring doorbell cameras, video surveillance cameras and traffic camera footage. And I thought, who would know when Morgan was going to work? Who would know where Morgan lived? I asked Morgan's mom if Morgan had been having any problems with anybody that would want to hurt her, and she described an issue that Morgan had been having at work with a male coworker. Morgan and I were coworkers and friends at work. There were a couple other managers who were kind of picking on her or bullying her, harassing her. She had reported it, and when she came to me, she told me the story of what had happened on October 8th, two weeks before Morgan died. So on October 8th, there was an incident with Morgan's phone. She left it on a workstation and several of her coworkers picked it up and started looking through the contents of her phone, mostly her pictures and videos that were private to her. And they were snickering and making like sexist remarks about her. So she was vi very much violated. One of the guys in the group of the coworkers that looked through her phone was Jason McDermott. I learned that this has been kind of a pattern with Jason McDermott. really gravitating toward women and harassing them. Jason McDermott went into the interview with Sergeant Kennedy and then gave consent for me to look through his cell phone. Where were you last night? At home. I first checked his location, and I noticed that his phone didn't leave his apartment that whole evening until he left for work. But I noticed he did have several alarms set on his cell phone, and one of them was for 1.20 AM. I knew he didn't have to be to work until 3. So that was suspicious, because he only works about 10 to 12 minutes from his apartment. We knew Morgan was killed at 2.15 AM, the time she was supposed to leave for work. 
as that interview progressed, Rocco indicated to me that he was finding some messages in Jason's phone that were painting a little bit different of a picture of what Jason was painting. I 100% believe that you're a level turn. I never saw it as such a figure. After the phone incident where, where her phone was taken, he sent a lot of texts apologizing, and he wanted to make it up to her. She texted him and said, mistakes can be forgiven, but lying breaks trust. She didn't want to be his friend anymore. She deleted him off of all social media. He ended up getting, like, really upset about it after she was killed. On October 28th, I went into work, and Jason was normal, back to just being typical McDermott. When we picked Jason up, we noticed that his car it was unusually clean for the weather we were having. Well, and he admitted that he just washed it that morning after work in a gas station down the street. So I went to that gas station to see if they can provide any video evidence of being, him being there. The video showed him pulling into the wash bay. Then the thing went around once, and then he kind of backed up and did it again so that it would get the car on two occasions as opposed to one. And as he left the car wash, he pulled around to the side of the building. He got out of his car. You can actually see him on the video looking down at that front right tire. We knew at the crime scene we had some mud spatter on a fence where the vehicle had been parked, and we figured that there'd be mud on the car. Everything was compiling. We had no solid physical evidence. But a couple of days after the murder, we were able to get traffic camera footage and some local business video footage. As you're getting all of the video from different cameras, you're also looking at the time frame. There was a vehicle consistent with his that actually left that house. And we were able to track that car all the way across to Morgan Fox's house through different cameras that it was picked up on. His phone had never left his apartment. So I think that was intentional on his part. I think he was smart enough to realize that if I don't take my phone, they can't track me. So he left his phone at home, but what he forgot was that in this day and age, there's cameras all over the place. That's the mistake he made. On November 4th, seven days after the murder, we had enough pieces uh, of the puzzle to go get an arrest warrant for Jason McDermott. And after the arrest, the digital evidence just keeps coming in. When the data report for the cell phone came in from McDermott's phone, it was pretty shocking at the amount of content that revolved around Morgan Fox. There were so many pictures of Morgan on his phone, and not that she had sent him, but that he had taken off of things like her Facebook page and her Snapchat page. We found out that he had surreptitiously videotaped her at work as she was bending over the, the belt at the shipping company to sort packages. He had been involved in an online chat room where he was pretending to be a woman involved with Morgan and her daughter. So he just not only had those fantasies to himself, he was sharing them with people in chat rooms. His phone proved Jason McDermott guilty, his own phone. And like, I think one thing that triggered him was after he stole Morgan's phone, she deleted him off of Snapchat and Facebook. And so he had no way to keep seeing her pictures to record her. So he took her, he took her from everyone else. The digital evidence, it all just pointed to the fact that this guy was very, very obsessed with Morgan Fox to the point that he killed her because he couldn't have her. I love my mom a lot. She was my whole world and life. I will never see her again because of the monster in this room. <laughs>